Listen, I know whatever is going on, and I know it might be hard, and I know it might seem challenging. But honestly, our Father, God, He don't give us too much that we cannot bear. He just don't. He's not that type of God. He loves us so much. Jesus loves you so much. That even at rock bottom, he is there making sure that you are okay. So really quick, guys, this too, whatever it may be, that shall pass. It shall pass. It will not last. And then you honestly, you're going to look back on it like, wow. Wow. I was so strong. God kept me. God kept me. And then when other challenges come along that you must face, you'll know that you can conquer that with God. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. I'm telling you from experience. Everything will be okay, child of God. The best is yet to come. Just open your eyes. God wants us to live in the present. God wants us to live right now. And he wants us to truly see the beauty and the blessings that's in our life. And if we can just get beyond our mindsets, hallelujah, Jesus, that have us trapped in the past, all these gods and blockers and walls and things that we are throwing up to block others out, to block experiences out because, hallelujah, Jesus, we don't, we do not, we do not want to be hurt again. So we're blocking the whole world out. We have a wall of steel up. Honestly, guys, we will never truly experience life if we don't get vulnerable mm -hmm. and we don't move beyond our past hurts. Everybody ain't out here to ruin your life. And God, honestly, God is going to give us protection and discernment. That's why it's good to read on your own because it'll build your discernment because you will know, hallelujah, Jesus. You will know, honestly, you will know God's, hallelujah, Jesus, principles for one. Because God's principles don't, hallelujah, Jesus, it just doesn't go by how we feel. Sometimes, hallelujah, Jesus, we allow our feelings to, to, to dictate our whole life. When we're supposed to be standing on beautiful, gorgeous principles that will help lead us into success in all areas of our life. So if, if, if we continue to just read and I'm done, I'm done. If we continue to just read and fill ourselves with the word. It will help guide us, guys, and it will build our discernment so we'll know, hallelujah, Jesus, and we can, we can, <laughs> we can honestly see if this person is good, bad, ugly, and we can honestly maneuver through situations and circumstances that we may face. Because God will give us instruction and direction. And honestly, this is the last point I'm going to say, hallelujah. Because I'm way off topic. When we, when we do everything by our feelings, guys, we always end up being hurt. All right. But if we, hallelujah, Jesus, stand on the principles of God and God's word and check things out first, you know, Lord, is this, do you think this is the right career path? It's okay to ask these things. 
it's okay to go to God first. Go to God first. Sometimes things are packaged in such a way that we believe that it's from God. And then we don't even go to God and ask him, Lord God, is this something that you presented to me? And we open up the package and we end up hurt. So honestly, when something is presented to you, ask God about it. Sit in it real quick. Before you even open it up, ask the Lord, like, Lord, is this for me? And God will give you the answer. It might not, hallelujah, Jesus, come in the way that you think. The answer might not come in the way that we think. Because God can speak and talk through anything. God can give us, it can come in a still, small voice. It can come in a large voice. It can come through a television program, a radio, while you're playing the radio. It can come through somebody that you're just passing on the street. It can come to you from your pastors, your bishop, through confirmation and the service. It can come from a YouTube. It can come from so many different sources. Because So that's why it's good to have an open outlook on how God will communicate to you. Okay? And it's good, honestly, to, to read your Bibles because the Bible tells you the characteristics and, and, and the, those stories shows you who Jesus is and how he operates on earth. And it honestly, it, it, it the way that Jesus operated on earth, he was operating with the full... <sighs> this is going to be so beautiful. He, he was operating fully in the, in the fruit of the Spirit. All of the fruits was exuding through him as he, hallelujah, Jesus, moved throughout his, his journey and his ministry. His short ministry changed so much. It made such an impact that today is still saving lives. So, hallelujah, Jesus, us adapting the fruit of the Spirit, we're only going to understand it by reading. To be honest... You know, I know, I know it's hard. It's hard to, to implement some time with God. It's hard because we're so busy doing this. We're busy doing that. We're busy building our careers. We're busy going to school. We're just so busy. But I'm telling you, if you, I stay in a car for about two, three hours, reading and worshiping and writing and studying. And, and you don't have to start and do what I do. But it is your responsible as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, to ask God on your behalf, how should you go about, hallelujah, Jesus, reading your Bible? How should you go about studying? How should you go about these spiritual practices, praying and worshiping? Because these things are going to keep you healthy, healthy in Christ. We are aliens here on this world. I know you don't want to sound it, and I know it sounds weird. But we are here but for a point in time, and we are called to stand out. If not anything, maybe your purpose is not to be this big old pastor, preacher, blah, say, blah, evangelist. Maybe that's not your, but you are called. If you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, you are called to be a light amongst darkness. That I do know. So it's going to take some time of you opening up the book. Even if you start with five minutes. Five minutes of your day. Ten minutes of prayer. Five in the morning, five before you go to bed. I cannot pray for you. Your pastors cannot pray for you. You must war and pray. It's your responsibility for you and your family. You are the covering of your family. And your prayer don't have to be sophisticated. And it doesn't have to sound like mine's, bishop and them's, none of that. But you must take responsibility for your walk in Christ. We all do. This is a message for me too. You can't 
can do it. And God is, God loves us so much.